Hello, everybody. Welcome back to People of Earth Season 1, Episode 6. My guest today is Rob Kleiner. Rob's a four-time Grammy nominee that has worked with such bands as Sia, CeeLo Green, The Weeknd, many more, as well as film and television scores. My exposure to Rob goes back to his earlier days when he was in bands such as Tub Ring and Super 8-Bit Brothers with his partner in crime, Kevin Gibson, one of my all-time favorite lyricists. Together, they made some of the most creative and engaging music that I've listened to to this day. So today we'll be getting into his love of music, his growth as a performing artist, his transition from the stage to the studio, and much more. So with that, it's my pleasure to introduce you to Mr. Rob Kleiner. All right. It's my pleasure to introduce you to Rob Kleiner, who I have on the card as musician, composer, producer. Is there anything that I'm missing that uh, you want to add in there? Uh, you could add mixing, mastering engineer also. Okay. All right. Yeah. And Grammy nominated, correct? Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, a couple times. All right. But I've never won, so I'm I'm Grammy uh, losing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's a it's just the start, right? So um, I want to thank we'll you for taking the time and uh, giving me a chance to get to know you a little bit better here. So um, I figure I'll ease into things with with my standard intro question, which is uh, favorite comic book character and why. Wow. Okay. Um... Well, when I was a kid, I used to um, collect New Mutants, and that was my favorite comic book. I also liked Venom a lot. So I don't know if we had to get a single character, I guess it would be Venom, but it was like he's different nowadays than the way his character was when they first introduced him, and I don't really care for what they've done to him in modern times, and I like the kind of original concept of him. He was this like two beings that both hated Spider-Man for different r reasons that came together and their hatred fueled one another. And then they kind of tried to make him a good guy later. And the movie stuff doesn't really have anything to do with that. So um, yeah, like the, the old school original incarnation of Venom was probably, I guess would be my favorite thing. Okay. Yeah. They've taken some liberties in the movies for sure. <laughs> um, all right. Well, these days, though, I'll, I'll have to say uh, I really like the Deadpool movie. So these yeah. days, probably Deadpool. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, all right. So kicking things off here for the first real question, I, I, I'd say just starting with like, where did your love of music come out of? And when I look at, you know, the things that I got introduced to you with, with, with Tub Rang and even Super 8-Bit Brothers, there's a complexity there and a merger of a lot of different styles. So really curious where that came from. Where did your love of music start and what kind of led you into, you know, touching on a little bit of everything as you got into making your own music? Yeah, I think it started with getting like a radio when I was a kid, you know, like having a radio in my house and my parents probably putting it on at first just for themselves. And then eventually me putting it on for me. And, um, and then, you know, like getting into like music videos and albums with my friends that I went to school with. And that's how I kind of first got into it and really decided I started playing guitar when I was in the sixth grade, I guess. So, um, that's kind of how I got into that. And I was really kind of, I, I knew I could tell right away. It wasn't like as good technically as a lot of like other kids were. So. I think I kind of leaned into writing instead of being like a technical god, just kind of like coming up with interesting ideas rather than being like a virtuoso. And that kind of quickly, you know, um, evolved into, you know, basically what I'm doing now. And, and you're, you, to answer your question about having all the different styles, I think, um, you know, yeah, uh, the artistic stuff I did a lot, um, Tub Ring, Super Brave Brothers, as you mentioned, definitely has like been called, you know, schizophrenic or genre hopping and stuff like that. 
And uh, I think that just has to do with the fact that like me and the bandmates, you know, Kevin and everybody else, just like, I, I think our interest in music was more than just one genre. You know, it wasn't, I don't know that it was not necessarily intentional to be like genre bending. It would just be like, just to do punk rock for five albums would be boring to me to make it, you know, um, or just to do, if you were just a hip hop artist making 20 hip hop albums over your career, I, it's like not knocking the people that do that, but I don't know, ADHD or something like, just kind of like gets old to me real quick, you know, to kind of keep repeating the same stuff or whatnot. So I think that's where that comes from. And, and I guess, um, which you know kind of leads me to my career now where i'm producing and writing for other artists i kind of feel a little bit more comfortable in this skin because i get to be a rock producer one day or a pop producer another day or a, you know an r&b or like a old school soul producer another day and that really fulfills i think what was always in me when i was you know touring a lot in in bands um and uh and yeah like nobody calls me a schizophrenic producer but uh for some reason if you try to put all those genres in one band people you know think it's weird or crazy or you're you're doing you know all this stuff but it, it always just me. kind of felt natural <laughs> thanks yeah i mean yeah. for us it just kind of felt natural you know yeah and, and i guess i would consider it genre less because it, it just you can't just put a single face on it right so um, that, that was certainly the appeal to me was every time I picked up an album, I didn't know what to expect. And I liked that. So yeah, definitely, definitely had that's that. awesome to hear. Yeah. Um, I think, I think that was the way you just said it was our goal. You know, it was like, even from album to album, even from song to song, maybe even from inside a song, we wanted people to not know what was coming next. And I think that was kind of the, the the you know mantra we had i think when we were writing a lot of our songs mm -hmm. yeah um things like living Ren with renee's head obviously top of my list so um nice yeah uh definitely dug that um so when did things kind of bend for you from just you know music being a passive interest to really like going okay it's time to time to make a band it's time to take this on the road like with each step like where did that seriousness kind of come from where it was becoming more of a thing for you? Yeah. I mean, I think it was all really early. You know, I, I think I knew I wanted to do music from pretty, a pretty young age. It was, um, I didn't know how to do it or what I was supposed to do, you know, but, and I figured that stuff out as I went along, but, I mean, I think it was around the same time that I started, you know, coming home from school and listening to the radio every day. It was just like, this is, I think maybe I got MTV, right? And I saw like these yeah. videos of like rock stars. I was like, whoa, that's, I got to do that. That That's cool, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Probably, yeah. you know, Guns N' Roses back in the day and stuff like that, you know, <laughs> just like rock stars on TV. Nice. What was, what would you say was the music that kind of like, started to differentiate you listening to stuff with your parents to finding like, this is my music now. Like what were the bands that stuck out to you first? Yeah. I mean, I think the first concert I ever went to was ACDC. Um, and I, that definitely wasn't from my parents' collection. You know, I think rock stuff obviously was like my first, like kind of love. I, I also liked hip hop a lot, but um, I mean, I didn't know how to do hip hop myself, you know, but I could learn how to play the guitar. Um, and, you know, so I think I followed that rabbit hole down the most, and, you know, I think I got into punk rock in high school and, you know, uh, metal, you know, when I was a kid and then, you know, into, um, you know, like nineties alternative, you know, that's like when I was a kid, that was like what was happening and all that stuff. And I think that, whole kind of genre and subset of genres kind of is what brought me into, you know, my, my kind of first awakening. Nice. Okay. Um, and, and so you did pick up guitar before keyboards and, and what other instruments have you gotten into? Yeah. Um, yeah. It's funny because a lot of people that, you know, know me from Tubring um, know me kind of as a keyboard player, but um, 
I only started playing keyboards when I joined Tub Ring, you know, uh, they, uh, me and Kevin were friends and I, and I was a fan of Tub Ring. I, I would like, we'd go to their shows and stuff and, um, and they kind of transitioned from just like a punk rock band into like getting into weirder stuff. And they added a keyboardist. I wasn't even their first keyboardist, but then that keyboardist quit and I really liked the band and I wanted to join, but they already had a guitarist. I had been playing guitar, you know, and I think, you know, Kevin is just like, well, you understand music and really, you know, like, I'm not really a piano, even to this day, I'm not a piano player, you know, I, but like, you know, with synthesizers and keyboards, you could just go, and it sounds cool. <laughs> you know, you don't really have to be a pianist to be a keyboardist. And so that's what I did, you know, and I got, I'm, I've gotten better at piano and keyboard over the years, but yeah, definitely my most comfortable instrument has always been a guitar. And on, on a lot of the Tubbering records, I'm, I'm playing a lot of the guitar stuff on a lot of it. Um, when I started doing a lot of the writing for the band, so a lot of times in the studio, it would just be easier for me to like record it rather than teach somebody and then have them record it. Um, so uh, what other instruments do I play? I play um, clarinet. I play trumpet, kind of not great. I just got, I'll show you. I just got this this guy like um, a couple years ago, but I'm, I'm not really very good at it yet. Um, and I play, um, you know, uh, I have a whole percussion rig and a little bit of drums that I record in my studio. Um, but really, uh, I'm not great at any instrument at all, even guitar, which is definitely my best. And so when people ask me that, I usually say I play Pro Tools, like that's my best instrument. Um, <laughs> like being able to work in a in a digital audio workstation that's kind of like the hub of my creativity not not like necessarily a traditional instrument okay putting this back all right <laughs> topic two i'll throw out to performances and and you know when i think about you guys um especially the tub ring days uh leaving it on the stage like if i'm to put that phrase out there and talk about uh, bands or artists that, that really did it. I think back to a bloodied up you sitting next to your keyboard <laughs> and, and that definitely comes to mind. And, and, you know, as far as uh, enthusiasm and theatrics uh, on keyboards, I put you and Tim Swanson at the top of the list um, of <laughs> my favorites of all time. So thank you, you know, ahead of just playing and, and being out there on the stage, it's really like, making that a performance and and what did that mean to you i you know for all your bands i i'm trying to think of uh you had another little side project and the name's escaping me at the moment um like mindless self-indulgence yes, or thank you uh, that's who i yeah. was looking oh, for cool. um also right very much a, a stage performance there um so if you could just tell me a little bit about like you know going that extra mile and like what that meant was that like a band decision was it an individual thing i think um you know for me personally i i always liked seeing energetic performers and that's all it is it's it's like um i remember the f the first time i saw weezer live i really love Weezer, but they like stand there literally like statues for two hours and they play and it's cool to hear their songs live but it's like it's so boring to me and uh i i didn't i don't know there was is like something about seeing pete performers on a stage playing music but also like having fun doing it you know and it i think you know you just kind of you you, you when you become a performer after being an appreciator you just kind of that lesson soaks into you it's like i want to do what i like seeing you know and um you know that's all it stems from and you know like some of the funnest rock shows i've been to are really chaotic and mm -hmm. full of energy and just feel like a performance more beyond this the the music it's a performance of you know like expression uh and it's it's yeah i don't know uh, and i i guess to the you know like it, that doesn't always translate if you're gonna go see like a folk singer or something like that it's not that I can't um, get into somebody, you know, just doing a beautiful musical performance too. But I don't know, for a rock band, I just kind of want to see some bravado, you know? Yeah. I want to see something, you know? And that's uh, that's all it boils down to. And I think when you're in a band, um, you know, that can be infectious, you know? So maybe if you, you get a guy in your band that was 
previously in a band that was, you know, in, in a statue band, you know, but he's the only one not like having a good time and performing. I think it kind of bleeds into that person and infects them. And eventually you've got a bunch of amped up weirdos on stage all at the same time and it becomes a thing. Yeah. And, and there's got to be a healthy in between. I, I wouldn't say that I timed it, but I feel like you almost spent as much time on top of your keyboard as you did behind it. So. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny well that's that just goes to show you how poor of a player i am i had to like make up for my lack of ability somehow uh, we'll, we'll agree to disagree on that one. that's fine <laughs> um so one of, one of the big ones here is just uh kind of find out a little bit more so you know you guys were featured in um i think it was working class rock star uh the documentary and you know a, a lot of bands that i like and have more than like loved over the years uh, ended up in that documentary and, and kind of walked through like the, the trials and tribulations of being in a, a more independent band. Um, definitely off the mainstream track, right? It's hard to get the traction, whether you're talking about radio um, or in today's day and age, like any kind of venues, like trying to sort through the internet and make and find your audience and connect with it. Um so you you lived in that world for a long time, and then you decided, I, I'm going to make this leap, and I'm going to go to L.A. and, you know, uh, shift focus and, and find a new path here. So you've now, you know, engaged with artists of all kinds of, you know, genres, and you've gotten into music or film production and things like that. Um, how has that transition been for you? knowing your background, all these different likes of music that you have, I'm sure there's something a little enthralling there to get to meet with people that do record in different genres. Um, but how has that whole like dynamic been for you and navigating that change? You mean from going from like a more of a performer to more of a like producer yeah, like, and a behind like being, being yeah. in a, a small time band, um, you know, booking gigs, making those road shows yeah. to now you can do your work from a central location. Um, I'm sure your studio is a little different that you spend most of your time in um, from the early yeah. days. So, yeah, I get you. Yeah, you know, it's um, like not to answer your question with a different question, but I think like a, a lot of people will, will kind of ask me the same thing by asking, well, don't you miss performing? Because I don't perform really much anymore. And um, I think it boils down to this, like, I, I you know, I, I, I always just wanted to make music and I, I love making music. And, and I personally always liked um, collecting records, having an, a, a albums. I'd love, I, I prefer to listen to an album than go to a show. I always have. And likewise, it translates. I always kind of loved being in the studio more than being on stage. And to, you know, answer the question about, do I miss performing and do I miss being on stage? Like being on stage is great. I, I also like being on stage. Um, but, you know, like you said, being an independent artist, you know, no radio play, no labels a lot of time, no booking agent a lot of time, like everything besides that one hour of stage time sucked. It was awful. <laughs> like, like, like booking the show, promoting the show, like driving to the show, rehearsing for the show, be bringing all your stuff inside and setting it up, taking it down after the show, finding a place to stay, trying to make enough money to like keep the van running, getting, you know, all that stuff is awful, you know, for one, for one or two awesome, great hours a day. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so like, yeah, I loved performing and it, and it was great. But, and, and, and if in a perfect world, I would still perform a little probably, but like, I don't miss it at all because it kind of all the other stuff like stings so bad. That's, that's like, it's, it's just, you know, there's like a, you know, r risk reward, you know, factor or like pain reward factor that kind of, uh, I guess I'm a little bit over. Um, and so, yeah, you know, transitioning to answer your question, then, you know, transitioning into, being just like a studio guy full time, it's great. Like I love it. Uh, like I said, I, you know, I, I just like making music. I always like listening to albums. I, I'm just happy to be in a studio every day. Like you know, um, and yeah. So it's great. It was a great transition. And and you know, when I was a performer, 
we never really figured out how to make it work financially. We were, it was always, it was always like break even or lose a little money mm -hmm. every year we did it. And, and, you know, we didn't really care about that. And, and, and we were getting good and we were, you know, becoming better performers, better writers and learned and experienced lots of great stuff. But financially it was kind of hell. And, uh, you know, now transitioning to what I do now, it's like much more comfortable and, you know, it's, it, so it feels great. You know, it's, it's a great, <laughs> I'm still self-employed. So it's okay, still right. always okay. like, you know, who knows? And, and a lot of it, a lot of it is on spec even still, you know, when you're a professional songwriter, you, you know, you don't get, you can write, you know, a hundred songs a year, which I do and, you know, make money off of, 10% of them or 20% of them, you know what I mean? And, yeah. and, um, and some years that percentage can go up or go down. And so it's that part's still, I wouldn't call it stable, but, um, but you know, it, it's a better business model than whatever we were doing back then, I guess is, is the best way to put it. I'm sure the bigger, bigger, uh, sandbox and, and the toy box that you have to play with as far as production, studios and and instrumentation everything else has has been fun for you i would assume <laughs> yeah I'm a, i've got a nice little studio of my own i work at other studios sometimes too and definitely get to play with a lot of like the top end stuff uh both at my studio and other places it's it's definitely good times yeah yeah if you, if you like composition i would feel that element has probably been a, a nice welcome change for you well, it's also, you know, technology has also come such a long way since Tubring was making, you know, when I was making my first records as a kid, um, it, 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 you, it's like the high end stuff, even the low end stuff now is better than the high end stuff was then. So, um, yeah, it's a, it's, it's also awesome in that aspect. Nice. Yeah. I, I feel that cause even just doing this little production here, like, what I've been able to pull together with just bits and pieces and, and it's not too bad cost wise. Like I can't even imagine 10 years ago what it would take to do a similar type of thing. And 20 years ago, you would have needed cameras with film, you know, like, and how would that, you would have to splice stuff together. Like how would that work? You know, it's, it's crazy. Yeah. Um, I want to give you an opportunity to give some shout outs to the, to the people, the whether they're their bands, individuals, et cetera, that have inspired you that can share with other people. So um, open floor for whoever you'd like to give a shout out to. <laughs> wow. That's uh man. I don't know. That's a big one. Uh, are we talking, we're, here we're talking the lofty like stuff, right? Like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, uh, I mean, if we want to stay on the music subject, I can just open up my Spotify here and I've been, Let's look what I've yeah, been and, that's, and it's open range, right? Like so, uh, I've had people bring up uh, authors and, and you know even uh, people that were close to them. So, wow, okay. Well, if if we're talking about like old school inspiration, it's funny because um, one of the the bands that really inspired me as a kid and definitely inspired Tubring's sound is doing a reunion show in a couple of weeks. I'm flying to Chicago to see them. They're called the Blue Meanies. Uh, they're a okay. really famous Chicago band, um, and they they were on a major label for a little bit, and they they've toured, so people outside of Chicago know them. But they weren't uh, they weren't huge or anything like that. And um, so yeah, that was like a big inspiration to me, and I'm excited to go see their reunion show uh, in a couple weeks. Um, yeah, that's a that's a big one, um, and yeah, I mean these days with the invention of Spotify, I I. I Listen to a lot of new stuff, obviously lots of old stuff too, but um, try to, you know, like I try to listen to music like an hour a day and a lot of it is like putting Spotify on random, you know, and um, it, it, it's cool. Spotify knows what you like. And so they give you lots of like great stuff. But I mean, going into um, what I'm listening to right now, which is what's kind of inspiring me at the moment. I listen to uh, this art, artist, Caroline Rose, a lot. There's this um, project called Wolfie's Just Fine, which is this like kind of famous comedian, his like serious music uh, project, which is awesome. There's like 
you i think you like that one like being a nerd like a lot of his song actually even the the name of the project Wolfie's you, just sir. fine is no, i'm just kidding yeah <laughs> yeah well uh but uh yeah it's kind of cool lots of like terminator 2 references and weird like die hard references in this like really beautiful folk music which is really cool um so yeah that's like a couple of things i've been listening to uh and um i watch a lot of tv these days like i'm really i was really addicted to like you know shows like you know breaking bad got me like so into like watching really cool dramas uh on tv and now it's a little saturated and weird but um there's a there's a show called The Patriot that like I watch over and over again. It was on Amazon Prime for two seasons and like I don't think anybody watched it, but it's like probably the most brilliant thing I've ever seen on TV. Uh, Kevin actually got me into it. And uh, yeah, I don't know. Those are my current shout outs, I would say. Nice. OK, I, I, I don't have any I don't have any good books. I've only read one book like in the last year probably. So uh, I don't think I'm qualified on that kind of stuff. I'm really I'm, into I'm is. As weird as it sounds, like I'm really into like um, a bunch of these like this sounds it sounds a little embarrassing as I say it, but like I'm really into a lot of like these TikTok and like Instagram, like just like um, not like goofy influencer stuff, but like uh, knowledgeable stuff, like okay. you know, like real estate investing guy or like uh, a you know health like doctor debunks all the other idiots on TikTok, like it's kind of like fascinating or there's that guy that goes into people's um houses and apartments which is like really fascinating for me to watch uh and that has been kind of inspiring uh i know that's probably not super cool to say but i like it oh hey yeah uh, i i want to say uh sincerely bottom of my heart thanks for doing this with me i really do appreciate it thanks for having me and uh i'm flattered that i'm worthy of the subject Thank you.